So I'm going to make my presentation in English, just for everybody to stand a little bit. Um, so I'm going to present these uh, main the main results of this experimental study, the comparative between these two techniques, uh, direct and indirect percussion in bifacial reduction. reduction. But first of all, I would like to point a couple of things. Uh, first, the first of, first one was um, why is it still important to study napping te techniques? Uh, in this Congress, we have talked a lot about the importance of technology for understanding uh, past, uh, past uh, communities, past times. And uh, napping te techniques is one of the this uh, of of the of part of this uh, technological behavior, and understand knowing and overall understanding napping techniques can allow us to understand uh, cultural behaviors, uh, techno economical uh, aspects, and so on and so on. But first of all, we have to uh, identify uh, which napping technique use. Uh, particularly with bifacial reduction, uh, it is interesting uh, because uh, we have always, uh, when we talk about bifacial reduction, we, we always think about direct percussion, uh, direct percussion uh, with soft hammer uh, and uh, uh, final stages, uh, uh, we sometimes pressure technique. But indirect percussion has always been relegated. Um, um, in this case, it, it was interesting to, to, um, <clears throat> to try to characterize uh, this uh, technique. So I took the, uh, these uh, two statements from Jacques Pellerin uh, from that point out uh, on a conference from this uh, uh, 2016, in this, this same conference, Experimental Archaeology Conference. And the first one was uh, of how we can, or what are the main uh, things we have to do for identifying napping techniques. First of all is to explore and precise the possibilities of each technique and its variants. And this can be achieved by, uh, uh, by studying the morphology uh, typical morphology of uh, of products, <coughs> excuse me, of products uh, produced by its technique, and also, and I think more interesting and more um, more interesting, not more important, but more interesting, explore and precise estimata of uh, estimate of its technique and relate with uh, physical mechanics. So, following these uh, two statements. Uh, we uh, decided to, um, to make two main research questions. First of all, uh, if it is possible to distinguish between indirect and uh, indirect and direct, it's wrong <laughs> there, uh, percussion techniques in bifacial reduction. And second, how could we identify uh, indirect percussion? And if so, we, how could we uh, identify uh, indirect percussion on archaeological record? Uh, um, as you can see here, we are doing the opposite path of other colleagues' uh, presentation. The main uh, use here of experimental archaeology of experiment is to, uh, to, to use experiment for uh, rediscovering a technique and for characterizing it and trying to uh, understand and, and, and trying to see if we can find, uh, find it on the archaeological record. Uh, well, regarding the experimental program and methodology, I would like first of all to point out the relevance of uh, ethnography, uh, because I, as I was, uh, as I told you before, uh, in the repercussion has been relegated on on the academia regarding uh, uh, bifacial reduction, but uh, it is interesting because in the ethnography record we have a lot, a lot of uh, reference. Of um, of native people using indirect percussion for making bladeless. You have there uh, on down. You have there uh, the example of uh, Lacandon bladeless making from the study of Garcia Franco. But also we have a lot for uh, by fashion. 
uh, as you can see, and um, overall, you, we have the examples from uh, this uh, first book of Holmes, 1999, of Native American Handbook of American Lithic Technology. He points out, and he uh, the uh, he points out the the uh, many examples of Native American using uh, uh, in their percussion for um, for bifacial napping. Um, regarding more a little bit of the methodology and experimental program, uh, first of all, one of the things I uh, consider we consider most important was to make a good control a good control of the variables to study. First of all, uh, we uh, we took a homogeneity. We take consideration homogeneity of raw material. Uh, we uh, we used uh, Ebrobele chert, really good quality Ebrobele chert, and uh, the type of blank. In this case, cortical uh, cortical big uh, flakes, cortical spools. Um, also, the raw material of the techniques uh, of the uh, of the tools. Uh, I use, as you can see down, uh, I use uh, reindeer handler for the pans and the billets. Uh, also, uh, the same method of reduction or the uh, process of reduction, uh, reduction by the biface. And also uh, to keep always the same platform angles and the same platform preparation. Also, the technical gesture, uh, try to use always the same technical gesture for indirect and direct percussion. And well, finally, all the parts that were produced, we uh, we measured them and we identified the stigmata. Stigma already uh, thought that was possible to find in the, uh, in the um, was able to find because of the previous experience we made. I'm going to show you a couple of videos of the mix. Well, the music, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Here I'm using obsidian, but well, it's the same. As you can see, a completely effective technique, and also the direct percussion technique. Again, the music, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. You can see the show. So uh, the main results we got when we measure everything and we start to, I'm going to show next to this, I'm going to, uh, the, the graphics and so on. But first of all, uh, that there are not any difference between direct and indirect percussion uh, flex regarding typometric data. And I want to point out, point out here, I am using typometric and not morphology of the flex because the morphology seems to be completely the same. Uh, seems. Uh, we have uh, within the percussion, we can get the same type of typical bifacial reduction flakes that we get with direct percussion. Uh, but regarding typometric data, in the first time, we, we don't see many difference, but uh, it seems that flakes produced by percussion uh, tends to be thinner, but with bigger of percussion. This is uh, also the, there is a ratio of breakage or fracture in indirect the percussion flakes, and this can be related with uh, this previous thing I was uh, uh, pointing out. Uh, there are also some interesting uh, data that might be related to indirect percussion. We're going to see, and also an uh, uh, interesting thing that is a bit out of the experiment because I didn't get a lot of uh, uh, fractures on this experiment is that there are indeterminate uh, fractures among indirect percussion by fascia pieces that I have never had on, on direct percussion. So here you have, just uh, to show a couple of, uh, of uh, graphics, uh, first of all, showing the length, uh, the length, uh, length in index that, as you can see, it doesn't make almost any difference between two populations, two statistical population, then, uh, we have the um, uh, index that shows some of difference, but I think this is better explained with these two uh, tables and the two uh, graphics. First, the, 
the frequency of uh, of the flakes of the thickness of the flakes of uh, direct and indirect percussion and the uh, mm, the amount of break uh, breakage of the uh, fractures on on direct and indirect percussion you can see 66 percent of uh, flakes that are broken, completely broken. I want to point out this, completely broken. And uh, with 61% uh, um, um, of flakes that have a really big bull of percussion. Here are some interesting stigmata. The, the first one yeah, on the left is what we call wing flakes. This is interesting because it's the only uh, stigma that is related to in their percussion, but in their percussion on the producing of uh, square edge uh, axis. And this is interesting because as you have seen, the system that I used is a vertical, uh, horizontal uh, in their percussion, but uh, square edge uh, axis are done with uh, uh, vertical uh, in their percussion. There you have uh, another interesting uh, uh, stigma. The, uh, it's kind of a step, but not exactly a step fracture because it continues, it go on, goes on. I think that in French it's called bouglet or something like that. Uh, also, a really interesting uh, uh, recurrency of overlapping hackles on some, uh, on a lot of plates. You can see in the, both uh, pictures. And uh, is the, the those fractures I was telling you the, the fracture on the left the fractures from the left are uh, it's kind of v, uh, v v fractures I call them um, but we do we have to take into consideration that their percussion also produces typical uh, bifacial fractures typical bifacial fractures as you can see on on the on the right. So, so just to uh, finally a uh, couple of conclusions on future research, uh, as I was telling you, typometric result doesn't seem to be discriminatory, but more work is needed. I think that it, it, it is interesting to uh, make a bigger sample and make uh, more work in order to verify these results. Uh, also, there are some stigmata, as you saw, that seems to be helpful for identifying its techniques, but um, it has to be related to physical mechanics that we still uh, doesn't understand well. Uh, uh, we have some really interesting uh, bibliography about this, uh, Aret Cirque, uh, 12, uh, 2012, uh, but it's a uh, a field that we have to continue working. Um, in this regard, yeah, uh, fractures, I, uh, as I was uh, saying, uh, may be a key, uh, especially according to archaeological record, because in, in uh, archaeological record, we don't have all the, sometimes we don't, it's really hard to have all the, uh, all the technical process of uh, bifacial reduction. We have sometimes only a couple of flakes, uh, broken pieces and so on, but, well, uh, finally, uh, just um, final conclusion, more experiments need, are needed, especially regarding, uh, regarding the system of holding the piece, type of punches and so on. Because, uh, as you can see in, the, in the, these pictures, there are a lot, and in the pictures that I showed the, from ethnographic ex examples, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, different systems of holding, hitting the rock, of holding the piece, of holding the, the punch. And I can tell you that sometimes it makes a really big difference from my experience. Um, this is everything. Thank you, everybody, for your attention.